What's going on guys, it's your boy Ethan. Hope you're having a great day. Today's going to be a very fun video. Finally hopping into the higher stakes cash game streets at Resorts World today. Going to play a 10, 20, 40. May or may not get crazy <laughs> uh, as the game goes on, but I made a tweet and I posted on my Instagram story earlier today about potentially trying to start up a game and I got some interest. So we're gonna hop over there and see how it goes. If you wanna follow me on Twitter or Instagram and be part of one of these videos or just play one of these games, then uh, feel free to follow me because you might just, you know, do one of these things and show up to Resorts World and play a game and be on the vlog. But before we get into it, I just wanted to say, I just found out that these Luckbox hoodies came in this really cool, like, teal, I don't even know what to call it, teal color. It looks fire. I'm a big fan of it. So if you're interested in grabbing one, support some of the punts, click the link down in the description below, get yourself a Luckbox hoodie in this sick of a color. I'm calling it a teal. They might have a different name for it on the site, but I just found out this is a thing. It just came in. I'm a big fan of it. I'm gonna rock it today. So hopefully it brings some run good. Hit the link down in the description below. Appreciate all the support and I will see you guys on the felt. This video is a special one as I organize a fun 10, 20, 40 here at Resorts World against some really good tournament players. So we're here to battle here. I start off with $30,000 as a buy-in. And one of the first hands of this session, we're playing a little shorthanded, four-handed here. I pick up Jack-10 of clubs in the big blind. Action folds to me and I raise it up to $160. Player to my left, Jesse Lonis, shout out to you. He's in the straddle and makes the call. Going to a flop of Jack-10, eight, two spades. Here with top two pair, pretty sick way to start off this session. I put out $260 to start off. And for 260, my opponent makes the call. Now to a turn, which comes a king. Board pretty connected now overall. I think this card should favor the preflop aggressor a lot. And considering I have two pair on a pretty wet and dynamic board, I bet out 740. Bumping up the price of poker, trying to get value from the plethora of draws out there. And once again, my opponent calls. We're off to a river now, which comes a 10. Bank City with a full house. I literally don't know what can call a big bet, to be quite honest with you, but I think an easy simplification of what I'm thinking is I have a big hand, so I'm going to bet big and bet again. I bet out $2,000, and my opponent doesn't even take that long before quickly making the call with Queen 10. What a sick cooler to start off this one. He had the best hand preflop, but on the flop and river, Complete coolers here, and it's a really good pot to start off the day. What a great one to win. In the following hand, I pick up ace-queen offsuit. I'm on the straddle here, and the button. Interesting dynamics. He decides to blind raise to 120. Yeah, they were, we're in a pretty fun game here. Small blind decides to re-raise, or put in a three bet, to 500. And with ace-queen offsuit, I just have such a great hand. Like I said, we're still playing relatively short. We're playing four or five handed now at this point. And uh, yeah, I'm, I'm gonna four bet this one to 1,240. The button ends up not really having anything to call a four bet with. He did blind raise at the end of the day. Anyways, back onto the small blind player now who decides to five bet jam. Oh no, it's about $7,000. So pretty big jam, I would say for sure. And uh, yeah, disaster now, absolute disaster. It all started with a very silly blind raise. Shout out to my opponent in the button who decided to uh, to make that move. Bumps up the size of this specific hand and I just don't think I can commit $7,000 with this specific hand. Ace King for sure I would fold, but Ace Queen seems to be right on the cusp and given it's off suit, it's even worse than a suited version. So I just let this one go and my opponent shows Ace King. So I ended up making a good fold, I guess. Um, I didn't need to lose $1,240 here, but you got it, man. Nice hand to Danny, you deserve it. Hey everyone, got some really exciting news because this month BetMGM have some really exciting events coming up here and I'm teaming up with them. So BetMGM and Borgata are having their very first meetup game on November 17th. From 3 to 8 p.m. I'll be there and hosting the meetup game at Borgata. So if you're around the New Jersey area, come hang out. We'll be playing 2-5, so feel free to call in ahead of time onto their call-in list. Uh, I'll have the information down in the description below, but call in ahead. I'll see you guys there. It'll be a really fun event. And this meetup game will be part of BetMGM's Big Shot 
Shot series, which officially kicks off on November 12th with their Big Shots Mega Tournament. You can win an entry into every Big Shot event this series worth $4,000, and they will also have daily qualifiers ending in a two-day main event on November 20th that I will personally will be streaming, so feel free to take a shot and try to knock me out there. On top of that, they're also giving you guys a chance to free roll after the series ends. If you register before the start of any of the tournaments, you'll automatically get a ticket for the Big Shots free roll on November 26th. So take a shot, play big, and I'll see you guys at the meetup game. In this next hand, uh, let's let's have some fun. I have eight, nine of clubs in the small blind. Cutoff player limps, and the player on the button to my right, he's a buddy of mine, tournament pro named Anthony. He raises it up to $200. Here, I decide to take a spot and three bets. Here, considering I am out of position, want to feel like I am uncapped, and I've also been slightly card dead up until this point. It's been two hours into the session, by the way. I'd set three bets to $800. And when the cutoff player who limped calls my 800, the button player thinks about his decision for a while. Uh, he looks like he wants to four bet, which would be very, very annoying. But he ends up actually making the call. So a little bit of a sigh of relief. We get to at least see a flop, which comes decent for us. It's king eight three rainbow. So very dry board. Uh, it's very disconnected. And I'm out of position here with just middle pair. Certainly could lean towards checking sometimes. But with my specific hand, I decided to stab for just $500. Thinking that this price could honestly deny equity from hands like jack 10, queen jack, ace queen. All of those hands that have tons of equity versus mine, and surprisingly for 500, both players make the call. So still going three ways to the turn, expecting to shut down all the time until the turn eight. Yes, thank you, dealer. Taking a quick trip to Bank City, I decided to bet again because this is not a card I will shut down on, of course, and I decided to bet a smaller sizing of around $1,500. And for $1,500, the cutoff makes the call, which is just perfect. When he calls two streets here, it seems pretty obvious he has a king, and he only has about four dollars to $5,000 behind, so trying to get it all in on the river. The player on the button ends up making the fold, so now we're going heads up to the river, which comes another eight. What? What? Are you kidding? I think I have a pretty easy decision now as any king will never fold to any sizing. So it's time to get the max. With quads, I go all in. He snap calls. It all happened in like half of a second. I show my hand and he throws his cards onto the felt. Uh, I safe to say, I, I don't think he's very happy about this outcome. Quads will win against his king. Absolute bad beat for my opponent here, but it's so sick for me, who cares? I'm only thinking about how sick this is for the video and content. So yeah, got to get some footage of the quads, got to take my pictures, got to take the thumbnail, all that fun stuff. Hit that like button because how often can you get paid this way with quads? I mean, playing over a $10,000 pot is awesome. And uh, now I have a really great hand to talk about and I'm glad you guys were along for the ride. So thanks for tuning in everyone. In this following hand, uh, it might not be as exciting as quads, I'm sorry, just a spoiler alert, but I do pick up queen jack offsuit in, on the button here, and I raise it up to $120. Only the big mind makes the call, who is the same opponent from the last hand. He decided to switch seats and want more pain, so let's see a flop which comes king 10 deuce to clubs. He checks it over to me with my open and straight draw. I decided to bet out $140 here on this board, and he decides to make the call for $140. We're off to a turn now, which is the bank ace of diamonds against the same opponent again. I once again having the nuts, he checks it over to me and you know, it's time to bet. I, I don't want to scare him off of a king or 10 and I don't expect him to have an ace here ever. So I decided to go on the smaller sizing to $240, but he sadly folds. So, all right, we'll, we'll exercise a little bit of mercy here for this poor fella. Uh, it's nice to still drill the nuts. Uh, didn't get paid, but I'm not going to be too greedy here at this point anymore. All right, we're going to battle into this hand here. Another hour or two has passed. I pick up ace three of spades on the cutoff. I raise it up to $120. Player to my left, Jesse, three bets to 380. An action fold around to me. Given the dynamic so far in this session, he seems pretty aggressive. And given that we are cutoff versus button, I opted for the aggressive line, which is to four bet this one. 
So I four bet it up to $1,140 and my opponent makes the call here. He has about $10,000 behind, the pot is building. I have probably not the best hand ever in the world, but we'll see a flop here. The flop comes queen, nine, eight, all red. I yeah, this flop is pure crap for my range. It literally sucks for my hand, it sucks for my range, and I just feel like there is nothing good about the situation for me, to be honest. And when that is the case, I decided to check. That means I'm giving up, guys, all right? I, I, I gave up on this hand. My opponent bets out $580, and uh, obviously I'm folding. Like, when have you ever seen me give up on a hand? Until now. Anyways, my four bet didn't work pre-flop. Seems like he has a strong hand, and my opponent shows me pocket jacks. So. Nice hand of you, Jesse. Uh, I unfortunately couldn't do much there, but he will take in my basically 1200 bucks this hand. All right, it's been a long while into the session and I finally pick up my first premium. I see pocket kings. Let's go, baby. I raise it up to $120, finally with a good hand. Player to my left makes the call and now the button who actually covers my stack. He bought in for about 40,000, give or take. He decides to three bet it up here to $500. Action folds around to me and this is music to my ears. I mean, I have a premium, I have the second best hand in poker and my opponent has $40,000 that we could potentially play for. And uh, yeah, this is, this is one of those hands that I'm happy to play for stacks with. I decided to four bet it up, bump up the size of the pot to 1300. Player to my left folds, but the button who three bet, he has some good news for me. He decides to call. We're off to a flop now, heads up in this pot that is brewing, and it comes queen, eight, six, two spades. This is overall a pretty safe board for my specific hand. I unfortunately don't have a king of spades, so not feeling amazing, but definitely one I'm gonna bet with my overpair. I bet out $600. I'm basically just hoping for a call. I think hands that I lose to would certainly raise. He could have queens as played and I don't know, eights might be a little bit ambitious, but for $600, my opponent makes the call. Now going to a turn, which comes the seven of spades. Board is extremely connected and I'm a little bit uncomfortable in this spot. So I start off with a check, not thinking that betting here would serve my hand any real purpose. And when I check it over to him, he decides to bet out 2,300. And this is when we gotta play some poker here. Gotta figure out what's going on because the pot is building, it's getting pretty significant and I don't really have the best hand anymore. My hand now basically serves as a bluff catcher. I don't know if he's gonna bet ace queen this way and this hard on this turn. So I decided on just making the call here. I certainly could potentially think about folding, but. I'm not one to fold over pairs on the turn, so I make the call with a big pot brewing. Definitely don't want to see a spade, but we're off to a turn which comes a 10. It's basically a brick. I mean, yes, you can say that jack nine is a straight, but that is pretty irrelevant here. I start off with a check over to my opponent again, hoping, praying, begging for a check here, but he ends up taking his time and with the biggest pot of the night brewing here by far, he ends up betting a massive amount of $9,000. <sighs> All I have to say is, I, yeah, just a miserable spot to be in. And like I said, I only had a bluff catcher on the turn and I really only have a bluff catcher here on the river and I don't think it's a good one. Uh, I don't even have a spade to block some flush combos and I think it over and and essentially, I just don't think my hand's good here at all. I'm trying to give myself a reason to call, and the more I think, the more I can't even find one. What bluffs does my opponent have? I, I don't even know. It has to be like pure random air balls that's just never connected at all in any street, and uh, that's it. That's all I got. I, I think he's good. I think he has the winning hand, and I fold. Right after folding, my opponent says he had it, I don't know what the it means, but I assume he had, by sure, a hand better than one pair. Uh, looks like later on after the session ended, he told me he really liked the flop and he said he had a pair and flush draw. So gotta just say, nice hand. For one of the last interesting hands of the Knights, I am playing um, what would people call the Robbie. It's Jack Four Offsuit. If you don't know, um, just look up Jack Four Offsuit on the internet and you will know. I'm in this small blind here and of course for the memes, 
When there are two limpers to me, I, I gotta do this for the content, gotta do it for the memes. I raised it up to $200 from the worst position possible. Anyways, this doesn't work at all because the player on my left makes the call, both limpers make the call. All of a sudden I'm going four ways to a flop, which comes ace nine seven rainbow. <sighs> all right, I, I guess I can't really have too high of expectations when I raise a hand like jack four. So action's gonna check around here. When the turn comes a four though, I have a pair. And um, I guess uh, since no one bet the flop, maybe I can just get a bluff through is kind of my line of thinking. I bet out $600. And when the player to my left immediately makes the call, Jesse here does not like to get away. So much for trying to get this bluff through, right? Um, but the other limpers end up folding. So we are now going heads up to the river, which comes another nine. And can I get a weak ace to fold here ever? I, I don't really know. And I guess I just have to try. Hoping he doesn't have a nine or anything like that, I decided to bet out a big one. Over betting 150% of the pot to $3,000. And when I throw it out there, I have a sense that this one might not work because my opponent raises to 9,000. Absolute, complete disaster. I show the jack four off. I've got a fold, of course. And Jesse, good friend of mine, he ends up showing pocket nines. Oh, great. That's that's great time on me. He just has quads, guys. Just quads. I'm I'm an idiot. I literally torched four thousand dollars on fire, but at least it was to a good cause because the money went to a friend of mine. And if I can help my friends get any richer, then so be it. I will donate to my friends. So if you guys ever want to just make some money, just slide into my Instagram DMs and maybe I too will give you four thousand dollars. <sighs> Out of the session. Sometimes Jack Four Offsuit loses. Uh, <laughs> I tried to do it for the memes and I got wrecked for it. Uh, the session, as much as I backdoored my way into quads, I actually didn't do great. The speakers are really, really loud here, so I'm hoping that it doesn't mess up this video. But uh, yeah, even though I backdoored my way into quads, I ended up having a losing session. That's just how bad of a poker player I am. It's crazy. Stack someone for the maximum and still lose. The Jack Four hand hurt. Uh, you guys didn't see a bunch of stuff, but played the Hilo double or bomb pots that I lost every single one. And yeah, overall, it was a, not the best session in the world. I was in the game for 30, out of the game for 27, 3, 4, 2. That's going to be uh, a little bit of an L. It's actually not massive, but you know, it feels bad considering when you were up a decent chunk to start the session. And then like four hours later, I just find a way to lose almost every pot. Um, it wasn't really in an exciting fashion either. So it didn't make for good vlog content. Um, but yeah, those are, that's what happened today uh, here in the Resorts World Street. So thanks so much for watching. I know you guys like the cash game videos. Wish I was able to book a dub today, but not this time. Maybe next time, I'll see you guys in the next video. I'm wearing this hoodie. It's the best, it's, I, I probably should have put it on me, but not the best promo for it. But um, yeah, it's late, I'm gonna go home and I'll see you guys in the next video. I'll try to fit in more cash game videos, but until then, thanks for watching. See you.